Welcome to the Tipping Point Show. I'm Jimmy Evans. I'm so glad that you joined me today. I have a very special guest with me today. We're going to be talking about current events in Israel. He is a correspondent over there, a journalist, and he is right in the middle of everything that's happening. We're going to be talking about some of the really uh, very important things that are happening right now in the nation of Israel. It's my blessing now to uh, introduce our guest. I'm pleased today to have joining me on the show Brian Schrager. He has worked as a journalist in Israel since 2014, serving for two years as the head of the news division for Bridges for Peace, and until 2021 is the bureau chief for USA Radio Network. Throughout the years, Brian has also written a number of news reports and analyses, most of which have been published by the Jerusalem Post. Today, he continues to work as a freelance journalist covering a range of topics, from exposés of Palestinian Christian anti-Semitism to regional analyses and unique Israel topics of interest to both Jewish and Christian readers. He's joining me today to talk about current, current events in Israel. Uh, Brian, thank you for joining me. Thank you. Yeah, great to be with you, Jimmy. So you're there. Are you in Jerusalem right now? I'm actually in Bethlehem right now. I live in Jerusalem, but I'm, I keep a place in Bethlehem. Oh, that's great. Well, thank you for joining me. You know, there's so much going on over there, Brian. And, of course, you've been a journalist over there for quite a while. And, you know, you've seen all these things progress. Now, what's going on in Israel's government that you've had 38 weeks of protest? What, what's going on? What, what's, what's the dynamic of is it left versus right? What's happening? It gets framed that way a lot. And, in, and in fact, people here are even starting to frame it as a left-right kind of issue. I think it's more accurate to frame it as a religious or observantly religious versus non-religious view, religious versus secular, if you will. Um, there are conservative, secular people in the United States, and there are many conservative, secular people in Israel as well. The, the major concern here is that when Netanyahu formed his government about eight months ago, I think it was, he, he had to do so by uh, building an alliance with four very, very conservative, um, here they're considered very ultra right wing parties. Two of them are religious in terms of of uh, explicitly, they're, they're what they're called Haredim, ultra orthodox, uh, and the other two are more yeah. politically oriented in terms of being pro Zionist. And you know, we're going to take back the land. We'll do whatever it takes to get it. These are in, these are groups that have never been in power before. In every other coalition that Netanyahu has had in past governments. He always had a center or, or more liberal, non-religious party that was part of his coalition. In those cases, he could tell people that were on the religious side of things that uh, I can't because if I do that, you know, I'm going to lose my coalition. He doesn't have that card to play anymore. Uh, today, he has nobody to, to offset their agenda. And this is a, a cause of great concern to many people in Israel who fear the imposition of a, a kind of religious theocracy, if you will. Well, this, so um, Ben Gavir, uh, and so the, that ultra right wing, the fear of the left and the protests, a lot of that is spurred by the fact that they fear that that religious party is going to try to impose basically Judaic law on them, right? Yes, uh, controlling uh, who is Jewish or not, which is a big deal here. Um, and determining whether or not people have the right to make Aliyah, controlling marriage. Um, it basically would take the fears that the government would become um, not a liberal democracy. Right. Yeah. I would have the same fear. I mean, you know, I, I, I don't know if I would, you know, go out and do what these people are doing for 38 weeks. But in, in, even if it were a Muslim, you know, nation or whatever, anytime, you know, radicals like that, the extremists take over, you basically are living under, you know, a theocracy. 
and and that's a that's a scary thing for a lot of people. So what do you what do you think, Brian? What do you think that Netanyahu accomplished on his trip to uh, the UN last week? He actually accomplished quite a bit. He 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 really his speech at the United Nations was a big hit because of his announcement of the almost Im- the imminent imminent peace war with, with Saudi Arabia. Uh, uh, normalization relationships, and with that announcement, he he he's saying he can bring in other neighboring Arab nations, and instead of the old dynamic where there was war and constant fear of conflict, that now they can work together for peace and prosperity. The old paradigm was that in order for there to be normalization with Arab states. There first had to be a solution to the so-called Palestinian problem. And what he's done is he's reversed that dynamic and he's saying, no, we can have normalization first and then we can address that problem. And so the, the Palestinian issue does not have to be solved before we have normalization. It still needs to be addressed, but it can be addressed after. And that appears to be the direction in which negotiations are going. Does the average Jewish person accept that? That there would be, they would give up East Jerusalem or give up the West Bank or, you know, go go on? No, no, uh, they don't. Uh, there, There is almost no one here I'm aware of, Palestinian or Israeli, who thinks that a two-state solution is something to be desired or is even viable. Palestinians uh, under Mahmoud Abbas and Fatah, the ruling party of the Palestinian Authority, they're all advocating for a one-state solution, which basically means bringing back all of the Palestinian refugees in Syria and in Jordan and giving them the right of return and then having a democracy where they can outvote the Jewish uh, residents and basically take over the government. So it would no right. longer be a Jewish state. That's their one state solution. Um, Israel has struggled with a number of ideas, poss- possible ideas, uh, ranging from annexation to a kind of normalization, maybe maybe where there would be like uh, some independent governments that have like city states or areas under their control, but still under the overall authority of Israel. The thing is, right now, there's no partner for peace. Israel has no partner for peace. I don't know if you saw recently, Mahmoud Abbas was addressing a, I forget who he was talking to in in Arabic, and he just, he said the Jews aren't real Jews, they're Kazakhs, you know, and and Hitler wasn't an (laughs) anti-Semite. He was, you know, he was just, he was upset because there were yeah. Jews that were, had economic issues. I mean, this is the man we're supposedly we're negotiating with, but it's not going, he, you can't negotiate with him. Um, and so what, one thing Netanyahu made clear when he spoke at the UN is that these issues need to be addressed in order for there to be a realistic peace. The Palestinian government or various entities need to accept that Israel is here to stay. They need to accept it as a Jewish state, and they need to stop paying terrorists a retirement income for life when they murder Israelis. My new book, End Times Answers, is out. It was released last week, 100 real questions from real people, and this these are the questions from subscribers that I've answered over the years. Now, we broke these down into categories. And so let me just tell you what some of the categories are. Questions about preparing for Jesus' return. There's 25 questions about how we prepare for Jesus' return. Uh, Families and children. Uh, Questions about Israel, the United States, the church, the third temple, the Gog-Magog war, the rapture, the marriage supper of the Lamb, the tribulation and the Antichrist, the Jesus' second coming and the millennium, and God's final triumph. And so if you have questions related to the end times, you know, we walk you through, you know, 
everything that's going to be happening, some very specific questions here that, that really, the answers that I think will bless you. And also, you can give this as a gift. Maybe you're a pastor, and a lot of preachers don't feel that knowledgeable about the end times, and that's why they don't preach on it. Maybe you give this to your pastor or your friend, a Christmas gift, a birthday gift, or buy it for yourself. Go on Amazon.com or XOMarriage.com and get end times answers, a hundred real questions from real people. It's a Israel's enemies, and of course Israel's surrounded by enemies, Hamas, Hezbollah, Islamic Jihad, uh, of course Iran there on the northern border, Russia there on the northern border. And so how have they responded to the inner turmoil of Israel? They, they see it as an opportunity. They see weakness and so they have been poking at the perimeter of Israel. There have been incursions over the border in Lebanon, where they've stepped over the border and set up a tent, where they've crossed over, they've sent over drones. There have been uh, incursions across the border just to test it, to see how the response is. Uh, there's a lot of rhetoric. If you look at uh, Iranian press or Hezbollah press, uh, you'll see them delighting in what they see as Israel falling apart. Ibrahim Raisi, the grand puba of uh, Iran, is regularly yeah. celebrating what he sees as Israel falling apart from within. So do you, do you feel, I mean, the, the Gog and Magog war of the Bible is Russia, Iran, Turkey, you know, all of those nations like that. As an Israeli living in Israel, do you feel a threat from Hamas, the, the proxies of Iran, you know, Hamas, Hezbollah? Do you feel a threat from them? Do you think that that's a real threat or there's an imminent threat of war there in Israel? Yes, but there always is. <laughs> it's, it's kind of the norm here. Yeah, um, that's right. Yeah. Uh, so Israelis live with this and have lived with this for 75 years. So yes, the, the concern is that right. the threat is real and there is, it, it is a virtual certainty that there are things going on behind the scenes uh, in Israel's military and in, their, in the intelligence communities that are very, very uh, serious. Uh, so yeah, th there are threats on all sides. And the biggest threat right now is Iran, not only acting on its own, perhaps not so much attacking Israel yeah. directly, but through its proxies, launching an attack from the north, Hezbollah, right. uh, even fr through Syria, there could be incursions. Um, and even, even from Jordan, although Jordan is generally a friendly state, and the main thing that Iran has accomplished in the last year or two is it has wormed its way directly into Israel in the organizations of Hamas and Islamic Jihad, groups like this that are intent on destroying Israel. And they have been providing arms and money to, to acquire arms to attack yeah. Israel. Thanks for watching. If you aren't a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe today and share with anyone you think needs to hear this conversation. To see the full episode, head to end times.